given your economic viewpoints, how have you positioned the Calamos Phineas Long Short Fund? I think the main message is that although uncertainty is high today, uh, risk is actually relatively low. And that's premised on our view that the U.S. expansion will be okay, and that will ultimately allow the overseas economies to gain traction. I think if that scenario plays out, then eventually stronger global GDP will emerge towards the end of this year into next year. Um, if that happens, I think the earnings cycle will pick up, and I see 10 to 20 percent upside in the S&P 500 between the end of this year, say Q4, and 2018. And again, the key assumption here is that the U.S. does not enter a recession. Um, we aren't seeing any of the traditional evidence for that. And in fact, beneath the surface, uh, most of the trends look perfectly okay. So again, it goes back to this point that uncertainty is different than a negative outcome. Investors right now are perplexed by the uncertainty, but if you step back and look at the broad fundamentals, we're going to be okay. We have uh, the bulk of our long exposure still here in the U.S. The dynamic nature of the market here, the growth opportunities are really unparalleled. Uh, we have about 20% of the portfolio in Europe. And again, this is consistent with the idea that Europe is entering, believe it or not, is entering a gradual upturn and similar to where the U.S. was three years ago. We have a bit of um, exposure in emerging markets, but remember where emerging markets are in the context of this deleveraging cycle, right? The U.S. was first in, first out, first in 2008. Europe followed. It eventually flowed into the emerging economies really right now. So there are opportunities in emerging economies, but I think their workout will take a bit longer. Given the current level of a heightened volatility now and expected in the future, how do you use your 30 plus years of uh, portfolio management experience and 14 plus years on the strategy uh, to help deliver returns in this environment? My simple answer is that volatility was always the opportunity to position yourself inequities for the long term. And without that volatility, in fact, it's very hard to gain an advantage. So um, whether it was the crash of 1987, recession of 1990, 2002, um, the crash of 08, and so forth, that was the moment when you were paid to engage risk. So I, I, I think volatility is not something to just run away from. It's, it's really the opportunity to rethink the role of equities in your portfolio for the better. So what are the risks that you see? If politics trumps economics, then we could be in for a volatile summer between now and the U.S. presidential election. Um, again, I, I think the fundamentals are fine. Uh, the key issue to monitor is the recession risks. I've assumed the U.S. doesn't enter recession until 2018. And if that's right, I think we'll be okay. Probably the biggest risk is not that we slip into deflation or recession. It's that investors are overpaying for the safety stocks. So after so many years of turmoil, um, investors have gravitated to asset classes uh, for defensive characteristics. And a good example of this is consumer staples or healthcare where there's very little long-term growth potential, but the stocks are extremely highly valued. And that's dangerous. You know, you can overpay for a stock, you can mistime your entry on a stock, but if the earnings potential unfolds, time is in your favor. If there's no earnings potential, you've really got to get that buy and sell decision right. And uh, there are certain asset classes like consumer staples that I think are, uh, frankly, in, in bubble territory. And it might be sustained in the very short term. I don't believe it's going to be sustained in the long term.